Hello and welcome back to Let's Play Space Quest V, The Next Mutation by Sierra Online. We've just kind of blown up the space bar trying to rescue our chief engineer who got into a bar fight in a scene somewhat vaguely reminiscent of Star Trek episode The Trouble with Tribbles from the mid or late 1960s. One of the classics of that um, Star Trek series. I'm going to make sure my mouse is attached here. And when we return to the Eureka, we just got orders to proceed to Clorox 2. And our coordinates for that are 90210. A number that rings a bell for some reason. And let's get moving. Looks like we're stuck with another crummy job again. You really surprised? As though they might give us a break. Fat chance. By the way, Captain, what you did before Cliffy back at the station? It was really great, sir. A lot of commanders would just left him to rot there. And that diversion with the space monkey is very creative, sir. It was pretty brilliant, wasn't it? Now don't go getting all puffed up on me, Captain, or I'll have to smack you upside the head. Flo's been looking at me kind of strangely lately. You wouldn't have any idea what that's why. I really couldn't say, Captain, but I think she's very taken with the way you handle the situation back there on the space station. Confidentially, I think she kind of likes you. Tell me about your mother, Drool. I'd prefer to keep our mothers out of this, sir. Though I must admit, I've entertained some rather amusing speculations about your progenitors. What do you know about Clorox 2? Not much, just that it's a small colony on the fringe of the G6 quadrant. The name seems to ring a bell somewhere, but I can't place it. Why don't you go into the back and lie down, and I'll bring a cup of hot tea and give you a back rub while you think about it. Huh, you what? A back rub, sir. You know, you lie down, and I'll start out with your shoulders and work my way down. Nudge, nudge, wink, wink, sir. I think Flo's opinion of you has, somewhat, has altered somewhat. Uh, no, thank you, Flo. I think I'm fine for now. You have a cute butt for a tight weight, please, sir. Approaching our destination. Thank you, Drool. Regular speed. That's strange. I'm not tracking a waste beacon. Maybe we, sh we should investigate. I can put us in orbit to take a closer look, Captain. Standard orbit, Mr. Drool. Alright. What else can we do here? Um, straight speed, light speed, status, never mind. Flow can hail the planet. No response from the surface, Captain. Maybe we should call Starcon. Yes, do that. You have reached Darkon Central Command. All our wavelengths are busy now. But if you stay on this frequency, an operator will answer this call in the order it was received. Currently, you are number 2,856,875,333. Very pleasant music track there. I like that one a lot. You rang? Status report. I finished putting WD-40 back together and reprogrammed her to perform as our science officer. You can now reach her through the science station on your comm panel. Anything else, Captain? Nope. What function may I assist you with, Captain? Scan planet. Atmosphere, nitrogen, oxygen, carbon dioxide. Gravity point zero nine seven normal. It's very light gravity. Average temperature 27 degrees Celsius. Warm. Life form readings. Indeterminate readings. Um, scan plan. I didn't finish reading that. The planet can support oxygen breathing life forms, sir. Scan for ships. Long range sensors do not register any ships, sir. Status report. I'm f f fully operational and all my circuits are functioning perfectly. 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 
Do you require anything further? Recommendation. I recommend we send down an away team to investigate the fate of the colonists. Captain, do you require anything further? That's it. All right. So they want us to beam down. This looks a little suspicious. I better go down with you. Meet you in the transport room, Captain. And I think we need to put Spike away first before it will beam down. And there's our android friend working in the background there. You click the um, regular speech bubble on this panel in order to drive to the transporter. This may be dangerous, Captain. Let's split up so we can cover more territory. Don't you think we should stick together? Only if you make a quick wardrobe change, sir. Now is the time to play a fashion critic, Drool. It's just that your shirt is so red, it's bad luck. That is, of course, a reference to the ill-fated red shirts on pretty much every Star Trek original series episode. The um, unnamed security officer who gets killed to show how bad the, the um, bad guy is. Abandoned mining tools and machinery are strewn carelessly about, as if their owners left in a hurry. Two terrestrial moons named Larry and Moe by the colonists are visible above the horizon of Clorox II. The rocky terrain of this planet results mainly from the large number of stones which can be found here. Scorch marks attest to the recent use of the colony shuttle pad. Rode along with the tumbling tumbleweeds. I'm sure that's a song somewhere they're not familiar with. Hastily sealed up buildings indicate rapid abandonment by their occupants. The building has a large hole ripped in the side of it. Okay. Let's go down into the town. Into the colony and look around. That building there, maybe? Nope, there's somebody here. The colony greenhouse is a shambles. Broken computers and twisted machinery have been strewn about everywhere. The small computer console appears to be the only piece of machinery in working order inside the entire greenhouse. And we have an arcade sequence. Well, well, aren't you an ugly one? Pot kettle. I was ugly like you once, but look at me now. I just ate. Perhaps I could make you pretty like me, hmm? Now try to dodge my death, loogies, monkey boy. Hawk. You know, a little hemorrhoidal cream might, might will clear up that rash on your face right up. Now get off me.
Nice shooting, Tex. I thought it was dog meat for sure. Hey, he's a real looker. I'd better scout around and see if there's any more of these creatures I can blow away. <laughs> Meet you back on the ship. Okay, Mr. Drool is a wee bit trigger happy. He's undergoing some sort of metamorphosis. Arg. Looks like Captain Picard. Thank you, at last I'm free. What happened here? Entire colony mutated. Bad soup, secret path, over the ridge, arg. What a bunch of gibberish. Enter access code. Yeah, I don't have an access code. We'll come back here in a few moments. Secret path over ridge. Let's go the other direction here. A suspicious looking object which you can't quite discern from your present location is wedged in the rocks above you. And it says Genetics Primordial Soup. Which can't be a good thing. The canister bears the phrase Primordial Soup in the logo of the Genetics Research Corporation. A large small label near the bottom reveals the ominous inscription, Biohazard Tetragenic Substance. Do not expose to direct sunlight, air, or water. Do not ingest, inhale, or allow contact with exposed skin. Mmm, good stuff then. Another fine product from Genetics Research Corp. 41666 Sector G6. is another set of coordinates that we can give to Mr. Drool. Alright, let me pause here for a moment and see if I can figure out if I need to do anything with that computer in that greenhouse. Okay, we noticed that we didn't drop this piece of paper when he attacked us. And it contains a number on it, 80869 or 69808. So we'll write both of those down here. I'm not sure which is the top and which is the bottom. I'm not sure Roger is smart enough to know the difference. So we'll try right way first. Personal Log, Clorox 2, Colony Administrator, Harry Carey. Stardate 3012.68. Something very strange has been going on here, out here, going on here in the colony since the Goliath's last visit. A small survey team is a week overdue, and there have been reports of strange creatures roaming the Badlands. No doubt it's just a bit of cabin fever by the more imaginative types, but I am worried by the disappearance of the survey team. Personal log started 3015.68. I am becoming more and more alarmed. The search party dispatched to learn the fate of the survey team hasn't reported back for more than 50 hours. Fear spurred on by more wild rumors about the creatures has the colony on the verge of panic. Personal log started 3016.68. God help us. A band of the hideous mutant creatures attacked the colony last night. 
Very few of us escaped the massacre, and I have been wounded slightly. There is no doubt that these creatures are intelligent, and even appear to have a rudimentary understanding of technology. They have captured the shuttle pad, cutting off our only means of escape. Using my personal passcodes, I have sealed the colony so that the creatures will no longer be able to get into any of the undamaged structures. Personal log started at 3017.68. He likes that .68, doesn't he? I am in agony. The wound I received burns like fire. An hour ago, the mutant creatures blasted off in the colony shuttle. As they climbed the boarding ramp, I got my first good look at the creatures in daylight. It was hideous. The tattered rags he wore were the remnants of a survey team survival suit. I have a terrible suspicion about the fate of the colonists. I am now utterly alone on this planet, dying, I hope. Well, that was a pleasant, uplifting, cheerful little story to read. The late colonists is now part of the Corpse Corps. All right, I think I think that's all we need to accomplish here on this planet. So if we come back up here to the beam endpoint, I want to take the tumbleweed. Use our communicator. This is the Eureka. Go ahead, Captain Wilco. One to beam up, Flo. Oh, great. Just when I was finally starting to unwind up here. No! All right. This is a little bit earlier than I usually like to end episodes, but I think we've accomplished enough for one shot. So, thanks for watching, and tune in next time as we go and try to figure out about this next stop on our list, which is probably the Genetics Corporation at 41666. So thanks for watching, and tune in next time for more Space Quest V. Thanks.